Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our another installment of our online classroom. Today we're doing chapter 13, section 4, compound events, and I'm just going to jump right into it here. Um, we're going to start dealing with events that are made up of multiple events, so we're going to string probabilities together uh, through the words and or or. And as you can see on the screen, a compound event is an event that's made up of two or more events. And like I said before, we will connect these with the words and or or or. Um, before we get into it too much, uh, I'll give you an example here of a compound, two examples of a compound event, rolling a number greater than two and rolling an even number. That Those two statements together make up one compound event. The other compound event I have listed down below, rolling a number greater than four or rolling a number less than three. We need a little bit of notation. Uh, so we're going to start letting uh, events be represented by letters. Just like we have numbers being represented by letters, we're going to now let events be represented by numbers. So instead of saying rolling a number, rolling a three on a number cube, I'm going to say the letter A, event A. Okay. Um, and if we want to talk about the probability of event A or the probability of event B, all we do is we put a P around it. So we say P of A. In other words, the probability of event a happening, uh, or in this case, the probability that we roll a 3 on a number cube. And this actually tells you uh, to calculate something if you can. Uh, the probability of A, in this case rolling a 3 on a number cube, is 1 out of 6. So uh, something like this, a statement like this, it says P of A is 1 over 6. Very common to see. Okay. Now once we have um, probability notation like that, what we're going to do is we're going to string those probabilities together using and or, or statements. And this is the map that we're going to use today. So I would take a moment, pause and play, and just copy down this map here for a moment. And I'm going to teach you how to navigate this. Basically, you have to decide which quadrant you're going to be in. And each quadrant is going to have four different situations. And you're going to have four different formulas for calcul calculating probability. Um, the pink stuff is for and. The green stuff is for an or statement. Uh, I know and is on top, but I'm going to start with ors because uh, I think they're a little easier. This is the scenario that I'm going to use for both and or and and or statements. Uh, so uh, we're going to fill a bag full of chips. It's got one red chip, two green chips, and three blue chips in there. Um, those chips are also numbered as they are pictured right there, one through six. We are also going to define events A through C as A, you draw a red chip, B, you draw a blue chip, and C, you draw an even numbered chip. Okay? If you need a moment to review that, pause and play. I'm going to move on. Um, okay. First off, or statements. Let's talk about the one on the left. It says probability of A or the probability of B happening. We want to get an overall probability of either of those two things happening. So, um, Pause and play and try to test your instincts here and see if you're right. Take a guess at calculating that OR statement. Pause and play. Okay. The way to do these is to separate each event happening, each probability. So we have to find the probability of A, drawing a red chip, or the probability of B, drawing a blue chip, separately. Um, for probability of A, the red chip, we have one red chip out of six chips. So the probability of A is 1 6. Uh, for the probability of B, drawing a blue chip, we have three blue chips out of six. So that's three out of six. Um, and the way it works out for this simple OR statement is that we're going to simply add those two probabilities together because it would make sense. You got one, two, three, four possibilities uh, to draw either a red chip or a blue chip out of the bin. And if you do that, you add them together, you get four sixths or two thirds altogether. Now, over on the right hand side, I got a slightly more complicated issue. Okay, I got event B or event C happening. So probability that we're either going to draw a blue chip or an even number. This becomes a little bit more complicated. Can you tell me why? Pause and play. Okay, well let's play it out. Let's just do it as we did the logic over on the left. Now what we're about to do is wrong, but we'll know we're wrong by the answer that we get. So. Uh, we need to figure out the probability of B, which we already did, which was 3, 6, and we need the probability of C, drawing an even number. And drawing an even number, you have 4, 2, and 6 to choose from. So again, it is 3 over 6. So if we follow the logic that we did on the left, we got 3, 6 plus 3, 6. Now that equals 
1. Which, if you interpret that, that means that you have a 100% chance of drawing either a blue chip or an even number. But if you look at your chips, does that make sense? That's the problem. Um, because if you look at your chips, you can draw a 1, which is red and odd, so it doesn't fit either event B or C. Or you could draw a 3 that is green. Uh, green is not blue, nor is 3 even. So it doesn't fit into blue or C. So there's definitely a possibility of not doing one of these two things. But our calculation just said that we had a 100% chance of doing that. So something we did here was wrong. Can you think of a way to correct what we did there? Pause and play. Okay, so here's the problem. Over on the left hand side, uh, the event A, drawing a red chip, and event B are separate from each other. There are no chips that are both red and blue. Okay, so uh, all the chips that are red, event A is over here, all the chips that are blue are over here, uh, that includes 4, 5, 6, event A is just the chip 1, and there's no overlap. However, if we talk about blue chips or even numbers, there's a bit of an overlap here. Here's a list, uh, 4, 5, and 6 are all the blue chips, uh, 2, 4, and 6 are all the even numbers, and you'll notice that there's a little bit of overlap in this cool Venn diagram that we've drawn here. Um, now again, I'll ask you just that one more question. Uh, we wanted to get, uh, we kind of proved it by logic that we wanted to get 4 sixths or 2 thirds out of this deal, and now that we see this overlap, can you think of a way to fix our original calculation? Pause and play. The answer is that we have to subtract the overlap. If we subtract the overlap, we can take 3 6 plus 3 6, but then we have to account for the two blue chips that were both even and blue. So we're going to subtract the two things that were both events. Uh, and if we do that, then we get our awesome answer of 4 6 or 2 thirds. Okay. Now up at the top of the screen, you'll notice the heading changed. Uh, over on the left it says disjoint, over on the right it says overlapping, and those are two no, new vocabulary words. Disjoint means that you've got two events that are separate from each other and they do not have things in common. Overlapping is just the opposite of that. It means that uh, there's at least one spot in there where uh, a possibility exists that fits both events quite well. In this case, four and six were both blue and even chips. So that becomes the bottom of our map here today. So the bottom two quadrants there, if you need it, uh, pause and play. Uh, there's a bit of math here. I drew a picture for a definition. So the math here is that you, for the disjoint sets, all you have to do is add the two probabilities together with an OR statement. With an overlapping set, you add the two probabilities together, but then you have to subtract the probability of the overlap. Continuing on. Um, this time I'm giving you two different situations, okay? These are going to involve AND statements. On the left, you're going to draw a chip, replace it, and then draw a second chip. And we want to find the probability that you draw both a red chip and a blue chip on consecutive draws, okay? Um, on the second situation on the right, you're going to draw a chip, but you're going to toss it out, you're not going to replace it, and then you're going to draw another one out of the same bag without that original chip in there. And we still want to calculate the possibility of drawing a red chip and a blue chip on consecutive draws. So uh, the probability, like I said, deal with them separately. So you got probability that you'll draw a red chip, 1 out of 6, and probability that you draw a blue chip, 3 out of 6. The question is, what do you do to those two numbers? Do you add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them? Pause and play, take a guess. The answer uh, is that we are going to multiply them. And the reason for that is that we are going to, we want, the AND statements make the things more rare. Okay, so if you take, uh, in this case, like, if you take 30% of 30%, you're going to get something that's much smaller than either 30%. And in this case, uh, drawing a red chip or drawing a blue chip, drawing a red chip and drawing a blue chip on the ne next one after that, that should be a smaller probability than either one of the two original events. So we are going to indeed multiply those together. Um, you'll get 3 on top, multiply the numerators across, multiply the denominators across, you get 3 over 36, which is 112. Um, now, in the second situation, 
We're going to draw a chip. We're not going to replace it. So the probability of A is still 1 over 6. But when we do not replace it, what changes to the second probability? Pause and play. And the difference there is that we have one fewer chips in the basket. So that means that we're not drawing from six chips, we're drawing from five chips. So you still have three blue chips in there, but your denominator has changed to a five because you have one less chip in there. And if you do the multiplication, you get three over 30, which is one tenth. Okay, you also notice that again, the headings changed. And these are two more vocabulary words, independent events versus dependent events. And the definitions of those are an independent event does not, one event does not have an effect on the probability of the other. A dependent event means that you do have an effect on the other. Okay, so we'll fill in the rest of our map here and then we'll be done today. Um, there it is, independent, one outcome does not affect the probability of the other. In a dependent situation, one outcome does affect the probability of the other. Um, for both and statements, whether you have an independent or a dependent situation, you are going to multiply them together. The only difference is that with an independent event, you're just going to multiply the two probabilities. With a dependent event, you're going to take the first probability, but you're going to multiply it by the probability of the second thing, given that A has already happened. Most of the time, that's going to affect uh, one of the two numbers. Uh, it can be different for every situation, so you kind of got to think this probability through quite a lot uh, before you're able to get it. That's all I have for you today. We'll deal with this more tomorrow, and we'll try to do some examples or activities. Have a great evening. Come to class with these notes, please.